The Chilabinsk region is full of sprawling woods and forests, so it's hardly surprising that the locals have developed a taste for country sports. And I headed just outside the capital to see what I could bag. For a very long time, the British have enjoyed shooting small flying things with large guns. And that's not something I've ever had a go at until today, where I think I'm going to be able to break my duck, or at least my pigeon. I'm pretty sure that that sign means I really do not want to be in this area, so I'm going to hurry off. <sighs> of course, being kind and gentle souls here on Discovering Russia, the pigeons we were after were all artificial, and Marat was my crack shot instructor. Hey there, my name's Marat. The club's been open for more than 10 years, and it's the most popular in the area. And soon, I was ready to blow away some clay. Locked and loaded, as Bruce Willis might say. <laughs> OK. And I'll take a little beginner's luck wherever I can get it. <laughs> you never believe it. First time, first hit. Can I carry on? At least two from two? I could get to like this. According to Marat, the secret is to shoot the clay right at the top of the arc. Don't turn your head, only look down the sights. And before long, I was ready for a solo effort. OK, so I'm going to see if I can load the thing myself now. And we're ready to shoot. I think this must be the most fun you can have with a deadly weapon. And you can even pick up a few tiny mementos. <laughs> Well, I think that counts as a pretty successful first hunt. Of course. I need to take home a trophy or two. What, what? I might have mastered the shotgun, but you don't really want to bump into someone with one on your afternoon hike. If I was going to take a weapon with me, I needed something a little smaller. With all of the Chilabinsk region's wide open spaces and countryside, it never hurts to have a good knife on you. But if you are going to survive in the wild, why not do it with a little bit of style? Because here, they've been making Russia's most beautiful blades for almost 200 years. Zlatoust swords are famous for their quality and decorative engraving. For more than a century, local bladesmiths were the only official suppliers for the Russian army and navy, as well as the Tsar's court. The history of the modern factory dates back to the late 90s, but its designers have a heritage that appeals to weapon buffs around the country. And I was going to watch them make me a knife. Then this chap cools it with a special coolant and sands it down to the normal shiny appearance of the steel. Once the blade has been filed and shaped, the rest of the components are all assembled by hand. So this... This is a dagger. Mm -hmm. So this dagger's just been put together and checked, fitted into its bronze scabbard here, brass scabbard, sorry, with a brass handle. And that's what it looks like now. And you certainly wouldn't want to be on the wrong end of that, because that is sharp. Assuming everything passes inspection, the new blades are then sent to the factory artists, where they're given an individual design. This black paint-like substance is actually an acid-resistant lacquer, and when the blade is galvanised, this little bit, which isn't covered, will turn golden, and this little bit will stay silver, so you get the distinctive emblem. And then it's returned to the workshop for the last finishing touches. So look at that beauty, my authentic Zlataust hunting knife. Just got to hope I never need to use the thing now. 
With my newfound weapon, the Chilabinsk wilderness held no fears. And if you're looking to get away from it all, this is the place for you. Wow, now that was worth the trip. So I've made it to Zorat Kul, the highest mountain lake in the Urals, which is considered to be one of the most beautiful and unique landscapes in the whole country. The lake is 724 meters above sea level and attracts more than 60,000 tourists during high season. And it's so clean that you can drink from it. Thirsty guy here. Hello, my name is Sergei. Sergei is one of the park rangers at Zurat Kul, and he's also an expert on the local flora and fauna. The national park is a safe haven for many animals. Sometimes bears can even be seen on this trail. They hide in the grass and wait for tourists. There are many moose and hares here. There are also many roe deer and foxes, plus a host of birds, wood, black and hazel grouse. And if you find that the ants have carried off your picnic, Sergei can provide a wild banquet of sorts. Alpine cucumber. No, no, no. No? We'll take more Alpine Oh. It is called kislitsa in Russian, which actually means something sour. It definitely lives up to its name. Well, you know, if you're living off the land, which is what you've got to eat. And at least dehydration's not a problem. Mm. It was good, actually. Also, you've got fresh water, you've got your delicious greens. You could survive here. You get thinner. Well, maybe that wouldn't be such a bad thing, eh? With a few alpine cucumber snacks in my pocket, I headed out of the forest, but I was still sticking close to the water. The Chilavinsk region has always been an important industrial centre for Russia, and that noise tells me I should be quite close to a special bit of engineering. And as long as you don't look down too often, you should be able to walk right over it. Well, I don't think it's going to pass a health and safety inspection, but this old bridge means I'm in the right place, because underneath these very rickety boards is the longest-serving hydroelectric dam in the country. For over a hundred years, the station here has been lighting up the local community, first powering the old ferro alloy factory, and now it's the only electric source for two nearby villages. And Chief Engineer Anatoly is the man in charge. This looks like a knowledgeable chap. Anatoly's worked here for the best part of 20 years and now manages the power station on his own. But the equipment's been here far longer than him. So that's been going since 1909, the same system still working today. And if he needs to crank up the juice, he just turns the wheel. So according to how much electricity they need to generate, this controls the amount of water that flows through here. And obviously, the more they let in, the faster the wheel turns, the more they can generate. And with equipment this reliable in place, there's no reason it couldn't last another 100 years. Mind-boggling to think of the amount of water that's flowed down that dam. It runs at almost four tonnes per second. And it's been doing it for over a century. There's still no signs of slowing down. It was almost time for me to leave the Chilabins region, but before I went, I thought I deserved a trip to one of the area's lakeside resorts. And now, it was time for me to get on the water. We were heading out to a rocky island in the middle of the water, but to get there, I needed to make a quick change. We're almost in the right place here, but supposedly the most interesting thing about this area isn't actually the island itself but what's underneath it. And to explore that, I just need to meet a couple of new friends. Hello. <laughs> now I've just got to successfully leap from here to there without going in there. Right. Privet. Privet Nikolai. Right, so we're going to go diving. Yes, we are going to dive in one of the lake's most interesting spots. We'll go to a depth of 12 meters. Nikolai is the resort's chief dive instructor, and he promised we were in for an underwater adventure. 
And once I was kitted up, it was time to get wet. Oh, finally ready to take the plunge. Oh, I just hope it's not too chilly. It certainly wasn't warm, but the full wetsuits meant we were able to stay down for quite a while and take a proper look at the island. And I got to meet the local wildlife, both below and above the surface. Ah, well, it's not quite the Great Barrier Reef down there, but it's definitely the best dive that I've done in Russia. And I finally got my water sports fix in for the trip. Time to relax, eh? It had been a long journey around the Chilavinsk region, and I felt I'd earned a little R&R. &R. This is a stunning part of the country, and it's a place where you can experience both European and Asian hospitality, among some of Russia's most beautiful scenery. <laughs> 